in an alternate universe if I was to change my mind in my mind right now there's no possibility of that but I would rather regret not having children than regret having them welcome back to other people's lives I'm Joe Santagato I'm Greg Dybeck for anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show don't hesitate to reach out to us you can hit us on our email which is oplpodcast at gmail.com yeah, just a reminder to everyone, if you're listening to the audio version, we do have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other people's lives, where we record us doing the episode so you can kind of see our expressions and everything. And if you're just watching the YouTube video format, uh, you can go to any podcast platform, search other people's lives. We actually have way more episodes on audio uh, that we did before we even ever started this YouTube channel. So if you want to binge some more episodes, you can find them there. So today we're speaking with a 28-year-old woman who is an advocate for the child-free community and lifestyle and who has herself been permanently sterilized so that she can never have kids. And as always, we've got the guests on the line. So thanks so much for being on today. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, of course. So just to start out, can you really just give us a summary of what the child-free movement is and what it means to you personally? Yeah, of course. So by the definition of the community that I'm personally a part of, um, it means that we do not have any legal, financial, or otherwise any responsibilities over children. Um, so that would include the fact that we're not step parents, we're not foster parents. Um, if our siblings were to, you know, unfortunately something were to happen to them, we would not then take in our siblings' children because um, that would mean obviously that we're legally responsible for them. And it also means that it's very clearly a choice. Um, so obviously there are people that are simply unable to have children um, and we would call those the childless people. By being child-free, it's um, our personal choice that we've made for ourselves and we that's just kind of um, our choice. So that's very clearly um, a distinction as well. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess, you know, my first question right off the bat is, you know, you you have made the decision uh, in your late 20s to, you know, be permanently like sterilized, not having children. When were you like, when when did you start, I guess, thinking about, uh, you know, the fact that like, I just don't want to have children one day. And when did it become like, no, I'm definitely not going to have children. I'm going to like be sterilized. Yeah, of course. So I actually had um, a medical issue about 10 years ago where um, I had a pretty major hip surgery and I was... I mean, they had to break my pelvis um, to make the long story short. And after going through all of that trauma, I was kind of like, okay, my body and my hips have been through enough that I really, I knew for sure that I never wanted to carry a pregnancy, at least to term. And then that's kind of what started it in my mind. And I was like, okay, so I can adopt or I can go to surrogate. And then I kind of started thinking about it. And I was like, wait, no, I just, I don't want them. Um, and it really developed more so when I was, I would say about 21, so about seven years ago. Um, and I was graduating with my bachelor's degree at that time. And I was um, a professional in my chosen field. And I was like, you know, I can't imagine um, working all day and then going home to a kid and putting all of my life and soul into raising a child like that. Um, and then about three years ago, that's when I started to kind of want the choice to be permanently sterilized. Um, I would say that it was about a year ago now that I really committed to it. And I decided to seek out a different doctor, do a lot more research about the type of procedure that I wanted. Um, so that, that procedure is a bilateral sublingectomy, and that means that I had my fallopian tubes completely removed. So it's different from a tubal ligation where they would just cut or 
quote unquote tie the tubes. And it's a newer procedure um, because a lot of people think that it would be like a tubal ligation and sterilization. But that's the procedure that I had done and the one that I wanted. So I'm very happy and fortunate that I had that done. So there's no turning back from that surgery. Exactly. There is absolutely no turning back. Um, It's absolutely permanent. Wow. And how old were you when you did that? Um, I was 27. So it was about a month before my birthday. So what is it though, that makes you, you know, so against the idea of having children? Yeah, that's, (laughs) it's going to be a little bit of a long answer here. So, um, I would say number one is the financial responsibility. Number two, um, I kind of see like my siblings with my nieces and nephews and I'm just kind of like, oh my God, I would never want to deal with a screaming child or with um, fighting with them on homework or carting them around to soccer games and things like that. And it just, it seems like the worst possible scenario for me. In addition to that, I would rather focus on my career. Um, I recently graduated with a master's degree. And in addition to that, I'm completely content with having my own home, having my two dogs and my husband. And that feels as though my family and my life are complete, that I can really focus on different things and not necessarily children in that regard. Okay. And also you did, um, in your email, you kind of expanded on that too. I'm looking at now where you just kind of said the idea of being a parent or raising a child is the absolute worst case scenario for the way that you want to live your life. Um, you also added, I would honestly say that I strongly dislike most children in general because they're loud, messy, sticky, and expensive. So I guess you kind of just answered that, but I was curious too, like, is it, um, is it sort of just a dislike for children in general, not like to paint you as a monster, like, you know, kids are evil, but you know, is it, is it just, do you see children and in a way, are you kind of like just repulsed by the idea of, you know, having one or, or what it takes to have one? Yeah. Um, for sure. In a way I am. I mean, I can, I do enjoy being around my nieces and nephews. Um, I'm not a complete monster. Like I won't like refuse to go to family functions or anything. And, um, but I can only be around them for so long. And like when they'll start screaming, I'm just like, oh my God, like get me out of here. And I just, I don't have the patience for it really. Um, Or like if I see a little kid in public, like throwing a tantrum, I'm like, oh my God, like this sucks. So that's just, it's a personal um, viewpoint on it. And I don't know, I just prefer to be around adults or I would say at least like teenagers and stuff like that, um, is obviously a little bit better, but yeah. And I mean, I guess like, of of course I think people can understand like this point of view because we've all had it at a certain point in our lives where we're like, you know, when you're 20 years old, you're like, I definitely don't want a child right now. Like I definitely not. Um, but I think it's always in the back of people's minds, like, okay, when I get to a certain age, like everyone's going to be having children and, uh, you know, whatever the other side of the argument would be like, you know, it's great having to raise kids and it's part of life, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I guess, you know, my question for you is how, how are you so certain that, because obviously like, like me, even right now, like I'm, I'm not ready to, to have children. I'm not necessarily like repulsed by them, but I definitely have nieces and nephews and I'm like, this is a lot. They're going crazy. I'm so glad I'm not doing this and they're not my children. So I don't have to deal with this. But, uh, are you, so you're just like not open to the fact that that could change at all in the future. Like what, why, why go through with the sterilization, um, at this point in your life? You know, are you just like, there's no possible way this could ever change. Yes, I am. Um, So it's interesting with that question because normally when like my friends or honestly just people in society ask me and they will say, 
really like you don't think that you'll change your mind? My response is usually, would you ask a parent that? So would you ask a parent, well, what if you change your mind about wanting kids and now you have three of them? You can't go Mm -hmm. back either. Like kids are just as permanent. Um, And in regards to that, I would in an alternate universe, if I was to change my mind in my mind right now, there's no possibility of that, but I would rather regret not having children than regret having them. And it's, it's dark. It's not something that people like to focus on, but there are parents out there who do regret having their children, whether it be um, from different circumstances in regards to behavioral issues, financial issues, those things do happen, unfortunately. And I just, I feel completely fulfilled again in my life now. Um, And I really cannot see that changing. I can get my, I guess, fix for children through my nieces and nephews, but no, I don't have any desire and I will never have a desire to be a full-time parent. So, okay. And, uh, sorry, go ahead. And also, I was sorry. Um, I was just going to say that. Uh, well, that's what, kind of what I was going to ask too. Like with your nieces and nephews, do you feel like, you know, that's kind of where you would get? I, I, I guess. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm assuming as like humans, we have some sort of attachment to a younger generation. You know, you want to be close to you know whatever, whether they're yours or not. Um, do you sort of feel that with your nieces and nephews? I mean, you kind of like said it in so many words of being like, I'm, I'm getting my fix from that. So I don't need that. Um, and also I guess a, a big, you know, question of mine is how far along into, cause you're, you're married now, but like how far along into that relationship did you disclose this with, uh, your, your husband? And is he completely like the same way? Like, yeah, never want to have kids ever either. Sure. So, um, I told him I think on our second date, because um, this is, it's a very real topic. And um, when I met my husband, like we met online and from the first date, I kind of knew that it was like a real relationship and that um, we were going to have like a long and happy life together. And that sounds crazy, but it's very true. Um, we were together for three years before he proposed and then we were engaged for another three years. So he's had six years of knowing exactly my stance on this issue. And I would ask him multiple times, like, are you sure you're never going to, are you sure? And I would say that at first he was a little bit more like, okay, yeah, I think that, um, I I can do this and stuff like I don't need to have children. And then it kind of developed into I can take them or I can leave them. Um, And then I would say at this point, he's kind of like, oh, my gosh, I really enjoy like the quiet and um, the relaxation that we've developed in our home together now. Um, He's not as I would say involved in the community as much as I am. Um, but he is definitely on board with this decision. I, I wouldn't have married him if that wasn't the case. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. And what do you think about, I know like a lot of ways, uh, like a way that a lot of parents kind of describe the feeling of having a child. They they almost describe it as indescribable. And like, is there any curiosity? Like, I know you said, you know, you have your nieces, your nephews, but that there is this sort of, indescribable feeling or attachment or love when the child is your own. Yeah, of course. That's a very um, valid question because I've, I've heard it all that um, I'll never know like true and real love until I was to have a child. But I honestly feel so much love in my family. Um, and that includes my husband as well as my two dogs, because, um, my two, my two dogs are my children. Um, and that sounds crazy, but it's like that kind of undescribable love. Um, I say that my husband is actually third on the totem pole, but no. (laughs) Does he know that? 
Oh yeah, I completely <laughs> make that like knowledge. I'm just like, hey, burning building, like I- I'm saving them. Good luck. <laughs> so to you kind of have alluded to like I've heard it all and and what people say and there's something in your email where you said you said we I guess kind of talking about this community the child free community we're constantly fighting to be taken seriously and like why is that why do you use the word fighting and why do you even kind of choose to come on a platform and talk about this when you know a lot of people with children will probably be upset you know, hearing you say this, um, but but what kind of sparks that is? Is it just the idea that it is projected by society that the norm is to have children, to reproduce, to you know, leave a legacy, things like that, um, that you feel like you need to kind of really speak out? Yes, exactly. So the thing about the child-free community and the child-free movement is that this is really a something that's newer. What I will say is that we kind of do have to fight to be taken seriously because a lot of people just assume that we're going to change our minds or um, they'll say to me, oh, just have one. But I'm like, they're not like potato chips. Like, (laughs) Um, and in addition to that, I've kind of heard it all because it is such an expectation. Um, I had somebody tell me that I'm a waste of life because I don't want to have children or they say that we're selfish or that we're just like the worst people imaginable because we don't want to have children. And everybody is entitled to their own opinions. But I also think that if somebody has a different opinion and a different way of living than you do, Maybe like just show them some kindness and be nice to them. Um, And that's definitely something that I advocate for. And it's always a shock when somebody close to me kind of learns that I'm child free because I I personally really recently started to speak up about it among my friends a little bit more because I knew like their viewpoints and a lot of them were so surprised. They were like, you, you don't just want to have one, like what? And it's just such a shock. And so that's kind of what we're trying to advocate for was that if you want to be a part of this community, like we will accept you with open arms. And if you have questions about, um, insurance coverage or finding a doctor to help you through this journey of getting sterilized. And we're always there to help out. We don't want to sway somebody if they think that they may want children one day. Um, But we're always here to kind of lend a helping hand and for that kind of communal support. I think so. I guess what, what just pushes you to get this, surgery because you could also like you had made a a reference before of saying like um you know it's the same thing like some people regret having children so it kind of be similar like i think the only difference to me is that you know you could make a decision and be like i don't want to have kids so you don't you don't have to have kids you know like what what would be the reason like because if people ask you like okay maybe one day you change your mind you know like five years ago someone didn't like this thing. And now five years later, they're like, you know what, maybe, I don't know. I'm like people change in their life, of course. Um, so, you know, to those people who would ask, like, why, why make such a permanent sort of decision when you could just, you know, not have kids? Are you worried about the, uh, the possibility of it accidentally happening? And at that point, like, you know, does the, argument of abortion come into this conversation where you're like, well, I don't want to do that either. So that's why I'd rather just not have the opportunity to, for it to ever happen to me? Yes, of course. So um, I'm all for being pro-choice. And that's actually something that we do talk about in our community. If you do have an accidental pregnancy, then um, we will we are advocates for abortion rights and everything of that nature. So if I was to have become accidentally pregnant, then abortion would have been an option for me. But with that being said, it's kind of like I don't even want to risk getting pregnant. And I also don't want to worry about that risk. Um, 
I was on birth control since I was a teenager and I really just wanted to be off of anything hormonal personally. And um, I've heard horror stories over an IUD. I mean, women, women's health care really needs to make a lot more advancements in general. Um, but that's a whole other conversation that we could go on for another hour with. And when I learned about how kind of in a way simple and easy the procedure was, it was in a way a no brainer. I wanted to take control over my own body and um, make this decision so that it was like never a risk. I just never have to worry about it again. And I researched this to the extent to where I asked my doctor probably about eight times um, during the lead up appointments um, and pre-op as well as the day of. And I was assured that there is no possible risk of me getting pregnant with the bicep because it would be like if I was to get pregnant with it, I would actually be like in a medical journal. Like that's <laughs> how successful this is. Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, to Joe's point, I think it, it is just jarring to hear when someone makes a decision that um, is so permanent. But I, I'm curious, like, why do you think people in general just have such strong reactions to your choice? Yeah, of course. I think that um, a big part of it is that parents see their children as like the best thing that's ever happened to them. And I think that they want to kind of extend that happiness for their children that they have onto other people. And I think that that's a really good and healthy place to come from. But in addition to that, as we respect other people's choice to become parents, I really wish they would like respect ours for just simply not wanting that same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, Personally, I think it's very strange for someone to like really care about that, to be honest. Like if someone was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. It's like, well, you definitely shouldn't because it's not one of those jobs that you should do take on, you know, if you're not like sure or you're not like your head's not really in the game. You know, like being a parent and being in charge of another human life is like, you know, that's a big task for people to take on. So uh, if people are certain that like, yeah, I don't want kids, then I think, yeah, for, then don't. Because, you know, I, I, on the opposite side of the, the spectrum, uh, the opposite side of the argument, um, those people, I, I don't understand their point of view of being like, well, you're telling me that you don't want them, so I'm going to convince you and then you're going to have them. It's like, I don't know why you would want someone to be a parent if they don't want to be a parent or if they like, because having an absent parent or having a, a bad parent is, I think, <laughs> detrimental. Like that would be harder to watch than someone just being like, yeah, I just don't want to have children. And also, you know, autonomy, like if people don't want to fucking do something like, yeah, don't, you don't have to do it. Um, I guess the only thing that is a little jarring is like just making that decision to be like, yeah, fucking never, you know, like <laughs> I, I totally get people being like, I don't want kids and whatever. And, and I know people personally that, didn't want kids at, until they were like in their mid forties. And they're like, Oh, you know what? We're thinking about having, and it's like, Oh geez, you know, because if, you know, at that point, if you guys had made a decision and it's like, you know, uh, then you, you don't have the opportunity. You don't have like the, you know, the ability to go back on, you know, whatever. But this sounds like this is an opportunity, a, a decision that you made a, a while ago and you're kind of sticking to it and you're like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. And I think it's actually interesting what you said that you would, you know, rather regret not having kids than regret having them, which I, I think I a agree with. Um, because if you regret having children and you're resentful of them and like they, then now someone else is suffering, a child no less is suffering from a decision like that. So I guess... That's you know. a fair point. Yeah. And it, you know, we, we didn't know what to expect coming into this. And I think that you are being very respectful, it seems, of the other side. Um, and I'm curious, like, do you, do you feel sorry for like all parents that you see? Like, do you truly think that like all parents could be living a better life? Like, do you think that they're all lying to themselves? Um, or do you like truly believe like for some people, like having a kid, could be the greatest thing for them. 
No, not at all. Um, I think that if somebody absolutely wants to be a parent, then more power to them. Um, I, I don't think that it's any secret that they don't love their life 24 seven. I mean, I, I don't know of any parent that like is in the middle of a store of a kid having like a temper tantrum and they're like, yeah, this is the greatest moment ever. But um, if they like want to expand their family and they want to have those children and really raise tiny humans, then I think that that's great for them. Um, because I think like there's all different types of people in the world, obviously. So if that's the choice that they want to make and um, that's how they want to live their lives and they are happy with those decisions and, you know, they want to um, make that commitment, then I think that that's great for them. And I'm curious too, like, is it, is it just those uh, like younger years that kind of turns you out? Like, have you, like, what is your opinion on being 60 something and your children are in their thirties? Like at that point, would it still be like, yeah, no interest in that. Or do you think that would actually, you know, be nice, but obviously the amount of work that would go into those first 30 years is, you know, I guess we are weighing that upon, but I, you know, is, is like that idea also kind of like, yeah, I'm good on that. Like, I don't need that. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, if I really like have a want to like, hang out with you know 30 year olds when I'm 60 or something then um I have my friend's kids or my siblings kids who will then be adults and I can kind of make those memories and like attend their weddings for example or even go to like their graduations and stuff and kind of have like those moments um but yeah I mean it's just that I don't think that I'll be missing out on it. I actually know that I won't be missing out on anything in my life by not raising children. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm new to the parent game, but I, I do think personally that those things don't compare. Like, I don't know if you can just replace like a person of the same age to get what you would get from that person being your own child. But you know, I, I think I had my, my first child, uh, almost six months ago. And like, I will honestly say that prior to her being born, my wife and I were very open in our conversations and just posed the question to each other. It's, it's kind of like a night I'll never forget because of like the transparency and how honest we were being. And we just said, Whoa, like what if we miss our old life? Like more than we realized we would like, that's like, I am one of the most selfish people that I know. And we've, we created a life of that had a lot of flexibility and, and luxury. So there was fear and, and it was refreshing to speak openly about those feelings. Um, because I think they're natural. I don't think they, it makes you a bad person or, you know, a bad parent. And, but for us, I guess, genuinely, like when our daughter was born and as we go through these early months, like there's truly not a sliver of doubt that raising her and being with her, like is the greatest thing that I will ever experience. And I kind of have and continue to experience incredible things in life separate from just being a parent. I um, think I'm very lucky and fortunate in that way, but like that's our, that was our personal experience. But I, I do like talking about that because we did have that open conversation. I think it is natural to, to feel that fear. And I'm not saying anything against your decision, um, but just want to share that, that like, yeah, there, there was that fear. And I think luckily for us, like there truly is no, out there truly is no regret and there's no inkling of like that i'm just saying that to to say it and make it seem like things are happier than they are yeah of course and um i'm so happy for you and your family that um you were able to kind of bring that new baby into your life and um feel nothing but love and happiness i think that that's fantastic um but yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, I don't think that um, I'm necessarily missing anything from it. But um, and as you mentioned, you know, there is no replacement for someone that would like be my own child, of course. Um, parents are living with their children every single day. They, they make those moments with them. Um, 
it's just it's a simply different lifestyle i guess and so yeah i think that um that's great it's just it's not it's not something that um i see as it like i want for my life but yeah no totally and and like as a new parent who is kind of experiencing all these feelings for the first time this love this oh my god I'd like th- these are the greatest things i've ever felt like it also doesn't bother me what you say and like I think it it just brings up a larger point and kind of a reality that we've come to understand in recent years like people defend particular choices or like their particular life choices in a very defensive way sometimes and like there is a dark side to that and it's like there's something called vindictive protectiveness and I remember like reading about this where it is just like calling out or shaming others for their choices their beliefs like beliefs I think we've seen this in politics and beyond, you know, recently. And like when there's a real inability to have open discussions or, you know, just the skill of like critical thinking or like civil disagreement and all these things, like when that gets lost, like I, I do think that's dangerous. And like, it, it does suck to hear that people are coming up to you telling you like, you're a waste of life or you'll never truly experience life. Um, because you know, your choices are your choices and your experiences are your experiences and you know, no one should be telling you what you're actually feeling. Thank you. Yeah. Um, And in those moments, it's really it's just difficult to kind of navigate through because um, a lot of times like it'll just be out in public. It's easy when it's on social media because then I don't have to respond to it. But if I'm in public around a bunch of people and I have um, someone tell me like that was a very distinctive moment when someone told me I was a waste of life because I didn't want to have children and not for nothing. I was looking at it objectively, but, um, I'm just saying her child was unplanned and the father was in prison. And so is that, that the best scenario for that baby? I don't think so. Um, But objectively, if we're looking at those two situations on paper, I I don't agree that I'm a waste of life, obviously. Um, Yeah, I mean, yeah, we would hope you wouldn't think that. Waste of life, it feels like not something that any other human can kind of make a call on as far as anyone goes. But I mean, you know, I, we appreciate you coming on and, and, and being, you know, open and honest with us about this. Like, obviously, some people have very stern opinions about these things personally i just really just don't understand that at all like i i feel like how could i possibly care about this like if someone down the street doesn't want to have a kid why the fuck do i care like what does that have to do with me it nothing like i you know i wouldn't even think about it like i just you know it's it is what it is i mean i can get like your parents or someone being like listen we we, we went through this and it does suck but like we want you to just be sure in whatever. And I think as long as you're sure and you've put a lot of thought into it, then like, good. Like, I think, you know, your, your loved ones probably have a different perspective because it's like, we just want the best for you. We don't want you to make any rash uh, decisions and, you know, whatever. So there are certain things in people's lives where they, you know, your family would be like, wait, are you sure? And like, you know, we'll be on top of you because of that. But at a certain point, it's like, you can, you can make a decision on your own. Anything after that just kind of feels like, they're undermining you and, and feel like you're not capable of making a good decision um, for yourself. And you're like, listen, I've put a lot of thought on this. I, I don't want to do it. But especially from strangers, that I will never understand. Like, I just, I just don't get that at all. I don't know. People are fucking bored, I guess. I have no idea. But again, I appreciate you. You know, we appreciate you coming on and, and talking uh, to this about us. Um, I, for one, didn't know there was even a community um, behind this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and to your point about like the random strangers, I think that it's just that in the future, if this community does start to grow, then there's going to be kind of less people in the next generation to pay taxes and to hold jobs and to pay so- social security, because those are arguments that I've kind of seen is that um, in order to kind of keep society going, we need to contribute to the population. And I did receive a little bit of, um, I don't want to say backlash, but lack for a better word, that's what I use from um, 
my mom and she was kind of and she kind of had the same opinion of, well, what if you change your mind? Are you sure that you really want to go through with this? But from my husband's family, they were completely supportive, um, asked me how the surgery went and everything. And when we were at a family party, somebody asked us if we were going to have children and I didn't even have to say anything. My mother-in-law just kind of jumped in and she was like, nope, they have their two dogs and that's, that's the family that they're happy with. And, um, you know, we have grandbabies from, um, uh, my other son. So I think that that's really noteworthy and how, um, families can kind of support each other as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like Joe said, we thank you for coming on. Um, obviously, you know, we know you're aware, we know you have an understanding of, uh, people that might listen and see this, that, you know, obviously won't agree, or it might bring up strong feelings, but, um, you know, we thank you for choosing us as the platform to, you know, come out and speak about this. And, um, like I said, we didn't know how this would go. And I think that, you know, even, even to be honest, like if there's assumptions about a person, you know, before you talk to them, it's like, Oh, is this person going to be like anti-child or just trying to like, you know, like antagonize people. But like I said, you know, it's a really respectful approach it seems of just kind of you know humanizing both sides I, I think is important and I think that with anything like with topics like this it's it's almost like the human mind is like wired for tribalism sometimes and you want to latch onto something and you want to make it your identity and you want to scream and shout and like I'm, I won't say them by name but I was doing some research and there's definitely some blogs and videos and things out there of this movement that's kind of very in in your face looking to almost like provoke people just like there are with people who say like we are here to reproduce and that's all and you're worthless if you don't and you know it's just always important to just you know it's not it's not always existing on that kind of fringe end of the spectrum so it was nice to you know kind of have this conversation and uh, yeah just kind of like hear your journey your thoughts and in a respectful way and we thank you for that yeah thank you guys so much for um having me and I, I understand that there are a bunch of other people out there, but um, I just hope that the comments and the kind of the response to this video is as respectful and as nice as possible. Um, I promise we're not just like child hating monsters. It's just simply a different way that we choose to live our lives. So thank you guys. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for coming on and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. There's no way I'm the only person with this problem. There's so many subscription services out there and along the way I've signed up for some, I forgot about it, and I had no idea how much money I was spending each month on subscriptions and services and things that I wasn't even using because I didn't even remember that I had. So it is 2023, guys. If you are not on top of your money, if you're not organized, if you're not budgeting and understanding how you're spending your money, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. This is super important because over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forget about. I was one of those people. I, I couldn't even name some of the things that I had monthly charges for, whether it was apps on my phone or t something that I signed up for because there was one obscure movie that I wanted to watch, but then I forgot to cancel the free trial. It's crazy. And th that money really adds up month over month. So... Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so that you can stop paying for the ones that you don't want. And it makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. You simply find the subscription you don't want, you press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. So no hold times with customer service or emailing back and forth because these things make it very hard to cancel too. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving an average person up to $720 a year. That's money that you could be using towards anything else other than subscriptions that you didn't even know that you had. So this is super important as we start the new year, as you get your budgeting and your savings and everything in line. Why don't you 
Go find out how much found money there could be uh, just by using Rocket Money and seeing all the subscriptions that you might be paying for. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash OPL. That's rocketmoney.com slash OPL, rocketmoney.com slash OPL. Honestly, I, I kind of like understand, I mean, I want to have kids that so I want to say that, but like, I, I, I get, <laughs> I get, um, I get her point of view, dude. Like, like I said, I, I think that like, I don't want anyone to be a parent if they're not ready to be a parent. And if they're not like down to be a parent, you know, like it, it doesn't feel like a job that you're supposed to be forced into to some degree, I guess, because like, you know, accidents happen, people have babies and you just kind of like figure it out. But like, if someone's like against it, why would you want to convince them to be for it? Like, mm. I don't get that. And also, like I was saying before, the, if the person down the street doesn't want to have kids, you won't even know. Who cares? Who fucking cares? Why does that matter? I don't get I mean, that at all. It doesn't, but it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a part of me. I don't want to make this about myself. It's just like convenient timing to have this conversation because like I can almost feel why someone would get so worked up because at least for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, like some of these experiences, especially like just having a child and, and just like how indescribable it truly is. Like I made this human and I'm raising this human. Like the joy is just like, otherworldly almost and and just the feelings like it truly is hard to describe so i can i can feel like those emotions creeping up like the one thing that kind of pulled at me a little which i said to her is like okay no you can't just like replace a 30 year old with like if it was your 30 year old yeah, child yeah. like so i can get like w that like fuel that builds up inside of you to like want to say something but again it's like okay like this is another person with their own experiences their own life like this doesn't affect me and that's fine so i'm going to hear them out but then people just you know they just make it their identity or they just feel like they have to you know push things on other people and it, it goes for both sides because like i said i was researching some of the child free movement and blogs and things like that and there definitely is a lot of like provoking or there definitely is some, you know, anti-child in general. Um, but yes, she seemed to just come at it in, in a way that, you know, felt respectful and that's fine. And, you know, I think we're both said to her, like, it is jarring to hear when someone makes such a permanent decision yeah. and someone younger, someone younger than both of us, where we right. realize how much change we've gone through just, in everything, just mindset. Bro, since just, I was 26, like it, it feels like decades since I was yeah. 26, almost because of how much I've changed as a person or my wants and beliefs. So yes, that is like, it's jarring. I think jarring is the best word for it to, to hear that decision be made. And I, you know, yeah, I just think like, you know, I mean, I don't have children, so I don't know, but I'm around my nieces and nephews and, you know, I, I want to have kids one day and, whatever, but um, I think the, pe the reason why people have such a strong feeling about it is because, one, I think we're just wired as human beings. Well, most of us, and of course there's like exceptions to that, are wired to like survive and procreate. Those are like our two main functions as humans, basically. Um, uh, and I think that it's probably the hardest thing that anyone would have to do and the most like emotionally draining and physically draining and all of these things. It's just about complete sacrifice, but the payoff is worth it most of the time. Uh, and, and people just want to share that feeling. And I think that it's, to me, the thing that was popping in my head was like people who are in good shape, right? They see someone who's out of shape and it's like, yo, you could be so much happier hmm. if you were like exercising or eating better, you would feel better. You would like do this thing. And someone's just like, yeah, I just don't want to like, yeah, I know. Like, I know that like, I could probably look better. I could probably like feel better, be generally more healthy, but like, I just don't want to. And you just want to be like, but why? Like, like I was in a place where I was like, completely out of shape and whatever and yeah, I like yeah, fought yeah. tooth and nail every day and got there and I feel so good and I'm confident now and you want that desperately for other people who feel who you, you can be like you're in the same position that I was in so I think that's the issue is that 
Yes. People feel like everyone has to live that the, the way that they're living. And like, because I felt something that was so rewarding, you should have it too. And especially when it comes to parenting, it's like parents also, I think for the most part, love having something like that they can be like to stand on it being like, I'm a par- like, I'm doing like a very difficult thing. And I'm like now one of these people where I'm a parent. So if you're not that and you're saying like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Or you like talk about it. They're like one, you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't have a, bu-. so it's like, it, there is a, 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 on both sides, a very like, yeah, it's just, it's, know. it's also just like, it's just fascinating how triggering a topic like this is like when you just see someone just make such drastically different, you know, life choices or have such drastically different desires than you. Or yes, if you're a parent and like that is your identity and that is your thing and someone just like refutes that and says like, nah, I don't need that thing. It's like, like, what are you talking about? Like nothing will give you more joy than this in life. How can you like, it, it, it is just fascinating. But, you know, I, I think the one thing that like kind of like can get at me a little and she didn't really say this, but, you know, from things I've seen and read is like, and sometimes people just act like this through conversation where it's like, if you have a kid, your life is over or things are going to change so much or like kiss your career goodbye or you won't achieve as much personally. And like, I just don't believe that at all. And like, I, you know, I'm only six months in, but I feel like I'm finding a, a great balance and, you know, truly making levels of sacrifices that I've never made before. Um, but again, like everyone's circumstances are different. Uh, I know I'm lucky in a lot of ways, but that like, sometimes it just seems very black and white to say like, well, you have to choose a kid or your career, you know, and that, uh, I don't like that type of thinking. Yeah, no, that, that too. Of like talking about something that you clearly know nothing about, you know what I mean? Uh, like you can't say like you would know what life with children would be like if you're, if you've never had them. Like, yeah, of course, like there are times where, the kids are screaming in a department store and it's like, you see sure. that and go, don't want that to happen. But then you can look at fucking anyone in the world, even if they don't have kids or their kids aren't with them and whatever happens, you're like, fucking don't want that either. Like a shit marriage. You guys are screaming at each other on the corner in Times Square. Like you guys are nuts. Sure. Like, Most marriages you know? suck, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And be like, oh, People I don't, I know I don't want to get married that. because I don't, I know I don't want to get married because, uh, m- most of them end in divorce and you know, the, the money thing and this and that and weddings are stupid and this, it's like, okay, you can make this argument about, you know, anything if you're not in it or not, you know, sure, whatever. Sure. But at the same time, it goes back to what I was saying before. If someone's like, I don't want to ever get married. I'd be like, cool. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'm not marrying you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think the only people that could have something to say would be close friends and like your, your family, just ma- sure. just like doing due diligence and making sure that, you've thought about it and you're not just being like, you know, some people don't even think about shit and they're just like, oh yeah, no kids. It's like, you can't do anything. You can't fucking, you know, whatever. It's like the same dude is like, you know, women are all the same. Like this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah, Clearly, yeah. You know, like there's no changing this idiot who's just going to say stuff like that. So doing your due diligence and making sure that people are making the right decisions for themselves as a loved one, as a close friend is fine. But ultimately, bro, people are going to live their lives and do what they want to do. You should let them do whatever they want to do. If they don't want to have kids, whatever, fucking cares. Deal with it. Like, what do you, what, what's the alternative? Force them? And like I said, then the child suffers. That would be more fucked up. You want some kid to suffer and because as a parent, that's like, I didn't even want to fucking do this in the first place. I think it's better to be like, you don't want them? Fucking don't, don't have them then, you know? Oh, man, we should have uh, asked her for a follow-up in like 30 years no matter what we're doing, no matter where we are, we just like get on a years, call yeah. with her and be like, so what's up? Can we put something on the calendar 30 yeah. years from now? And <laughs> yeah, but we thank for, thank her for coming on and, and being honest, but interested to hear what you guys think in the comments. Um, yeah. And for anyone out there that wants to be on our show, you can hit us uh, on our email, oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us an email and uh, let, uh, let us know what's up and we'll uh, hit you back. Yeah, follow us on um, TikTok, Instagram at OPL Podcast. Head over to patreon.com slash OPL show to support the show that way. And thank you as always. We'll see you next week. See you next time.